Hi, I'm Megan, and today I want to show you how to make design boards using Canva. This tutorial will use my custom Canva templates, which you can access for free using the link below this video. Start by using Google to search for inspiration. Use basic room descriptions and click search to populate all sorts of images to browse. Scroll through the thumbnail images or click on one to open it bigger along the side. From here, you can use the arrows to scroll through bigger versions of all the images. When you find an image you like, right-click on it with your mouse and select Save As. Consider creating a specific folder for your design board images so you can find them later. Pinterest is another great place to look for inspiration images. Sometimes when you click on a pin, it will take you directly to the source website. Here you can see when I try to right click on the image, I can't because of the zoom feature. In these instances, it's better to use the screen grab feature on your device. On my Mac, I click Command Shift 4 to open the screen grabber tool. I can then drag and drop across any part of the screen to save it. Most often though, when you open a pin, you will see a larger version of your selected picture. Instead of clicking through to the website, go ahead and save images directly from the pin itself. Once you've collected a lot of inspiration photos, go ahead and open the free design board templates included with this video. It features seven pages of templates. When you click on the stacked pages icon in the bottom right, you will be able to see all the included pages, including inspiration boards, sample and idea pages, as well as three design board layouts. It is also here where you can duplicate or delete pages or reorder as you desire. Double click on any page to work on it. Now open up your folder of saved inspiration images. You can either use the upload button within Canva or drag and drop your images directly onto the canvas. Once you have an image on your screen, notice that it is actively uploading in the left hand corner. You can always access any images you upload by clicking the Uploads button along the left side menu. Drag and drop your image into one of the photo placeholders. Then keep adding images wherever you want them. Double clicking an image will allow you to resize it within the placeholder. Use the corner handles to zoom in while making it bigger or zoom out by making it smaller. You can also move an image around within the placeholder in the same way. Continue swapping pictures until you land on a collage that really resonates with your vision for your room makeover. Your next step is to fill these bottom circles with your color selections. Start by clicking on one circle and opening the color tool in the upper left. Here you will see lots of color options. In the middle is a menu that says photo colors. These are all the hues represented in the images placed on your board. You can click see all to see other color palettes for all the pictures currently uploaded. Using these colors is a quick and easy way to start to identify the color palette for your room. Keep swapping out colors until you land on a scheme you really like. With your color scheme complete, your inspiration board is done. However, there's a second layout option also included. Populate it with your images and colors exactly the same way. You certainly don't need to use both of these layouts for your project. I recommend picking the one you like better. Next, let's move on to the sample and idea pages to start finding ideas for your room. Like before, use Google to find sample pictures. I recommend starting with items you already have and will be used in your space. We already have a navy velvet bed, so I'm going to see if I can find its picture or something similar. This one here is a pretty good match. 
When possible, save clean, large pictures with white backgrounds. And use that screen grab tool to save them to your device. Amazon is another great site to look for items to use in your boards. Instead of saving the smaller images, I recommend clicking on the thumbnails to open up larger versions to either save or grab. Finally, shopping sites such as Wayfair or Target can provide lots and lots of options for various room elements. Try to collect as many different options as you can to give yourself a variety of images to experiment with. Again, when possible, always save the image with a clean white background. Like before, save all your images into categorized folders to keep yourself organized. Back in Canva, adjust the category titles to represent the items you need for your specific room makeover. Then drop in all the various options you've found for each category. Notice when you drop an image into a placeholder, it will match the square dimensions. Sometimes it can crop the image in a weird way, like this blue layer. To fix it, simply delete out both the image and the placeholder, then re-add the image and size it down. Use the pink guides to keep the image in alignment and sized with the rest of the photos. Once you've populated your samples and idea pages with lots of options, it's time to get building your design boards. Again, I've included three different layouts for you to choose from. The first has colors along the top, the second has colors along the side, and the final one includes placeholders for lots of furnishings and finishes. Once you pick your template, start with selecting the color palette. As before, click on a circle to open the color tool. Since you already designated your color palette earlier, this time you can use document colors to save those same hues. However, don't hesitate to look for other colors that will make a combination that really works for you. Next, you're going to select some products for this specific design board to see how they work together. Again, change the template titles to match your room's needs. I find it easiest to drag items in from the left, but it's also helpful to refer back to your samples page to see what items, at a glance, look best together. Continue dropping in various items for your space based on what you think look right together. Don't forget to bring in items that are already in place in your room and need to be worked into the design. This bottom area is for you to collage items together to see how they might look in real life. Notice when you drop most pictures in, they have a white background, which doesn't make for very nice collages. Let me show you how to get rid of them. Here on a new canvas, I made the background cream so you can see those white backgrounds better. When I drop in that bed, you can easily see the white surround. If you pay for Canva Pro, you can click Effects and select the Background Removal tool. As you can see, it completely removes the white background in a single click. Although this is a paid feature within Canva, it really is the best way to make collages for stacked images. However, there are some free ways to remove backgrounds too. Notice on this white dresser there are white rectangle handles on each side. You can simply drag in each handle to eliminate that white space. Although this won't result in a perfect removal of the background, it can clean up images quite nicely, allowing you to still layer images on top of each other without that distracting white space. I have one more technique to show you, this time using frames. Here is a circle mirror. 
When I try to use the background removal tool, I get an error message because the image is just too complex. So in this instance, I'm going to add a circle frame to my canvas. Notice when I drop the mirror into the circle, it crops off that white space. I can then resize the mirror within the frame to eliminate even more of the background. All right, now that you know how to remove backgrounds, let me show you how to collage your images together. I recommend starting with bigger pieces like walls, floors, and large furniture items. Then add an accessory such as lamps, art, and curtains. Don't hesitate to play with different options for each element to find the exact combination you like best. Add in descriptive words to keep your goals for the space firmly in mind throughout the design process. Finally, label the board, duplicate it, and then keep experimenting with different colors, furniture items, and accessories. When you're satisfied with all of your boards, navigate to the download button in the upper right hand corner to download and save your boards in whatever file type you prefer. Keep your design boards on hand as you shop, install, and set up your new space.